Hello everybody and welcome to this new segment of Math Challenges here at Baiju's where we have picked up, we are going to pick up some really amazing math problems and logic puzzles from around the world for you to solve. Now let me just take a little bit of time and read out who else has joined this session. So we have Sheetal Mevada saying hello, we have Nitin Jain, we have Nikita and um, okay, so students are still yet to join. I mean, we have Manasvi here. Hi, good evening to you. Um, okay. And who else is here? We have Nikita saying hello. Hi, Nikita. So could you guys, uh, you know, I'm sure you had quite a bit of time to have a look at the puzzle here. So did you manage to get a solution for this? We have Darshan Sahu saying hi, hello. So did you manage to uh, understand this or because this was looking a fairly simple one, right? But then the highlight of today's session is going to be where I'll show you two different ways in which you can get the solution for this question. Okay, we have Nirmit Gupta saying hello. We have Rudrakshi is here saying hi. Good evening to, to all of the students. All right. So yes, hi. I am going to wait a little bit more uh, till we get other students joining the session because we, we straight away come jump, gonna jump into the, 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 the you know first method in which we can solve this and then as I said there is a creative way in which you can approach the problem as well we will also check that out and there's plenty of you know good information coming your way in this session today all right okay so shall we begin now by looking at the solution for this question now first thing that I'd like to tell you, point out, is that all these semicircles are going to be identical. They've been arranged in a particular way and all we've got to do here is figure out the diameter of this semicircle. Now how will a typical approach work? Now this is the first method, as I said this puzzle went viral and this is a test question that has been taken from uh, uh, an exam in Singapore. Okay. Now this is the first method in which I am uh, trying this out. Now first thing. Have a look at the first semicircle to the left and the last semicircle on the right hand side. Now, if I say this part of it is 22 and let's just go ahead and call this part as X, right? So that will complete the full diameter. So now in the first semicircle, the diameter here is going to be 22 plus X. Now, if I look at the last semicircle at the top, since this part is the same 22, this is going to be the same x. Let me just write x in a better way. Okay, so this is going to be the same x. So the diameter here is going to be the same 22 plus x, right? Fair enough so far, right? Cool. Now have a look at, uh, you know, the two semicircles which are at the bottom. You will see that this part is x and then this part is going to be 12. You've got a similar scenario happening at, at uh, the semicircle to the left hand side here. This part is x and this part is 12. So the leftover part in both these semicircles have got to be equal, right? So I'm going to go ahead and call that y here and this is going to be y as well, okay? So look, we have done the difficult bit, right? So now all we've got to do here is equate because all these semicircles are going to have the same diameter, right? Like, like if I pick up the first semicircle, what is the diameter there? The diameter of the first semicircle here is going to be 22 plus X, right? Now I'm going to equate that to the diameter of the second semicircle, which is going to be how much? X plus 12 plus Y, right? So equate that, uh, you know, X plus 12 plus y and solve the simple equation. So what is going to happen now? This x and this x is going to get cancelled and we are going to get the value of y as 22 minus 12 which is going to be 10. So there you go. You figured out one missing bit uh, that is 10 and that's it. You don't need anything else, you know, because you know that this semicircle here which I'm highlighting, I'll just pick up a different color to highlight that. This semicircle is only in terms of y, right? So the diameter here, the diameter of this semicircle is going to be how much? Y plus 16 plus Y, right? So let's substitute Y equals to 10 here. So 10 plus 16 plus 10, and there you go. You figured out uh, the diameter of the semicircle as 36. So 36 is going to be the answer, but I'm sure you guys must have got the solution using this method, okay? This method where we are assuming the missing part to be some variable and then solving it using equations, 
right? So we've understood this bit, I'm sure, right? Okay, I'm gonna write a little bit bigger. So this is the first method in which you can figure out the solution. Now, as I said, I'm going to show you the second solution, which is a bit more creative than this. And this will involve nothing more then moving these semicircles, that's it. So come on, pay attention to the second method. So this is where, you know, the second method. So this is going to be method number two. All right, so all we are going to do now is simply move these semicircles. So first thing that I'm going to do here is pay attention to, to this semicircle at the top. I'm going to move it. Okay, I'm sorry, not this one, this one. Let me just replay that back to you. This is the first semicircle that I'm moving left. You just got to tell me how much is it moving by. Now this guy is moving by 12 to the left, okay? So I'll keep that number here. This one has moved by 12. Now, the next bit is going to be where I'll move these two by another 12 and all these three are conjoined now. So how much have they moved by? 12 first and then 12, these two semicircles have moved. Now the same thing is going to be, uh, uh, you know, we'll do it to the semicircles below and then what will happen? First, this guy will move. Now, I'm sure you remember uh, the top was 12 plus 12 so far, right? So this guy has moved 16 and now what will happen is, okay, I've got to keep writing this at the top. The top was 12 plus 12 and now this has moved 16. Yes, and now both of these are going to move a distance of 22. Okay, so this has moved a distance of 22. And now, you see, this shape appears after we have simply slided the semicircles to the left-hand side, right? And now you see what will happen. This is going to be the final shape, right? So look, this part is how much? This part is 12 plus 12, which is going to be 24. Right now, this part where we have moved the two semicircles below that was was how much? 22 plus 22 plus 16. How much is that going to be? 44 plus 16, and that's going to give us how much? This is going to be 0, 060. So this complete part is going to be as you have seen 60. Right now, how do I get the diameter? This part, how do I get it? Well, from 60, all I've got to do here is what? Remove the 24, right? So this part is going to be 60 minus 24. And there you go. This is a much more creative way of figuring out the answer, right? So I've shown you two methods. The first method was using simple equations. And this is the second method where you're simply gliding the semicircles to the left and you will figure it out. So this one is going to take a little bit of imagination and that is the goal of this entire series that we are starting off uh, saying math challenge. Okay, so I'm going to talk about, uh, by the way, we figured out the answer as you have seen by simply gliding these semicircles to the left. Okay, Nikita, I'm going to try and explain this again to you. All right, so let's just have a look at this. Okay, look. All right, observe the animation, please. Look, first thing, what is happening here? This semicircle, which I have just highlighted, is going to move to the left by how much? 12. I will move that now. So it has moved to the left by 12. Well done. And now what will happen is, these two semicircles are going to move another 12. So overall, 12 plus 12 is what the complete distance that you have moved to the left hand side, right? I'm going to repeat the same again uh, below, where as you shall see, this semicircle has moved 16 units to the left, okay? So I will be writing that out here, 16. And now these two are going to move another 22, and this is what we get, right? After we simply moving these semicircles to the left hand side. And now the final situation is this, yes? Look, let's just rub everything out. So this is the final situation after moving all the semicircles to the left hand side. Now what do we have to figure out here? We have to figure out this bit, right? We are trying to figure out the distance from this point to this point because this is nothing but what? The diameter of the semicircle. How do I find this? Well, from this complete distance that you can see here, which is equal to 60, I have to cut out this bit, right? Because if I cut out this bit from 60, the leftover part is nothing but the diameter. And that is what is going to be the answer. So this is going to be 60 minus, you remove these two, 24. And this is a different way of getting the answer, as I said, which is equal to 36. So the goal of this series called Math Challenge, which is going to start from Monday, is this very thing. Develop your 
problem solving skills okay first thing that we are trying to do is develop your problem solving skills where you develop the ability of breaking a difficult problem down into many parts and then being able to solve those parts and then connect the answer to the whole okay and then we would also try to develop your logical reasoning skills out of the box thinking how do you think in a better way like logical reasoning there would be a few puzzles coming up uh, called uh, you know there would be something called Cheryl's birthday which was again uh, a viral puzzle from Singapore went viral all over the internet then there is another puzzle called an age related problem with this is uh, going to be solved using you know what I'd like to call Sherlock strategy you will see these puzzles coming up next week and finally the goal is also to develop your critical thinking skills because remember just solving math problems the way it is shown in the textbook it's not going to be enough there is always going to be a creative way to approach the solution as you have seen the first method was generally is is the method that is being taught in the book right but if you think a little bit creatively by gliding these semicircles to the left you see you you come up with a creative approach to solve a problem right so this is the goal of the series math challenge which is going to premiere every day 8 30 in the evening and as i said these are the three skills that we aim to empower in you why you may ask where would you be applying these skills now this is where it gets a little interesting first thing is entrance exams now these are going to be the heart and soul of you getting into a good university because remember the three w's where you study matters a lot you know like what top universities in India and the world with who you study you should be studying with some of the brightest minds in the country from who you study of course you should also be studying from some of the best professors in the world and all these top-notch universities in India or abroad will have this first step that you need to clear and that is going to be entrance exams and more often than not majority you know I should I will be bold enough to say that 90 to 95 percent of these entrance exams would be testing your problem solving skills they would be testing your logical reasoning skills and they would also be testing your critical thinking skills let me give you a few scenarios out here let's let's talk about national India engineering entrance exam you know the IITs you know you know the NITs you know the bits all the entrance exams like JE mains JE advance you have the bits at creative problem solving all right even in medicine remember when you want to clear a medicine entrance exam remember there is physics so there will be problem solving there will be chemistry numericals as well so problem solving there as well and then law I could go on and on CLAT common law admission test uh, there's there's this entrance exam which is conducted by National Law University Delhi symbiosis University conducts an entrance exam as well so plenty of entrance exams which are going to test your logical reasoning and problem solving skills business Postgraduate, graduate, you know, you've got entrance exams like CAT, ZAT, IIFT, uh, you know, at the undergraduate level, there is an entrance exam being conducted by IIM Indore for uh, a five-year, uh, you know, business program. So all of those would be testing, you know, decision-making skills. They would be testing out your problem-solving skills. They would be testing how you can creatively answer the questions. How well is your logical reasoning skills? All of it, design you know National Institute of Design IITs have you know certain design programs as well both bachelors and masters you've got your architecture you've got pure sciences if you want to study at Chennai Mathematical Institute these are just institutes that are coming from the top of my head you know uh, the Indian Institute of Science and Research the ISAS the NISAS the Indian Statistical Institute all of these are going to have entrance exams that you would need to clear so Apart from your academics, you know, the focus would also be on these skills. And if I were to talk about the international entrance exams, you've got the SAT, you've got the SAT subject test, you know, you've got calculus, A, B, and B, C, GRE is something which you do at a postgraduate level. GMAT is going to be an entrance exam that you write for admissions into top business schools. LSAT is going to be an entrance exam that is needed if you want to apply to some top law schools around the world then design schools will ask for your design portfolio all right so all of these would happen after you finish your 12th class all right and this is the whole purpose of the series which aims to improve these skills in you because as I said and I repeat that again just a focus on academics is not going to be enough it's not going to take you anywhere the focus should be on creativity it should be on how well you are able to reason logically how well you are able to think outside the box and how well you are able to solve these problems 
in a specified amount of time. Because remember this, they're not going to give you a lifetime to solve the problems in the entrance exams. These entrance exams, like let's say the example of CLAT, 200 questions, 120 minutes. IIT, uh, JE, Mains, BITSAT, again, they would be fixed number of questions that you should have to solve within, within a fixed amount of time. All right. So this is related to entrance exams. And mind you, I've just scratched the surface. I, I, the, the, the time that is spent on this session will not allow me to go into detail of all these entrance exams. I just wanted to give you a brief overview. That's all. Okay. And then next, after entrance exams, well, we've spoken about it, right? The math and science Olympiads. Imagine, uh, Pop, you know, the preparation that is needed to, to get into a math Olympiad, be it the national math Olympiad or even the international math one. These kind of problems must be solved because you've got to know what students outside India uh, uh, you know, are solving, what kind of problems they are solving. Because look, come on, you're, you're competing at an international level now. So math and science Olympiads, the third one would be scholarship tests. You know, scholarship tests would test these things out in you. I'm sure you are aware of, uh, uh, you know, the road scholarship. You know, this is one scholarship which is offered by the Cambridge University uh, after you finish your 12th, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, after you finish your undergrad maybe, if, if I'm correct, which will make you uh, study at Oxford University uh, uh, free of cost, entire things paid. So you have to come up with essays, convincing arguments. You, there would be interview panels as well, you know, job interviews. Like if I were to give you an example of a job interview that, that requires some really creative thinking, it was the one from... Google, if I remember, uh, let's not bother too much about the company though. And that interview question was, how many, I'm, I'm gonna modify it to suit your understanding. Let's say, how many cricket balls can you fit inside a school bus? What is your answer to that going to be? How many cricket balls can you fit inside a school bus? So what sort of thinking is expected out of you? Just to give you an answer, you know, this could be a direction in which you can move on, you know? Like a school bus, typical dimensions, length, breadth and height, that will give you the volume. And then you got to know a cricket ball will have how much radius, right? So it is a problem that you're used to solving in, in surface areas, volumes, in, in grade 9 and grade 10. But something like this pops up, a bit of approximations also come into the picture. All right? So be careful. You're living in a different world now. Just to focus on academics is not going to take you a lot further. Top-notch universities and institutes around the world are going to expect a lot more than just a 95 or a 98 percent in your 11th and 12th. Keep that in mind. All right. And this is where these kind of puzzles that would be, you know, broadcasted every day, 8:30, would help in developing these kinds of skills in you. Okay. Keep that in mind. And lastly, of course, these will make you a better thinker. You will learn how to think in a structured way. You will learn how to organize your thoughts better. Yeah, so be prepared starting Monday, 8.30 p.m. These would be premiered. Okay, and lastly, yes, I'd like to talk about our amazing Baiju's Classes 2 Teacher Advantage program. The link to this is, would be there in the descriptions box. Do give it a try uh, uh, because the advantages of this are pretty amazing. One month free access, you've got uh, uh, you know, uh, live sessions engaging. You've already seen how we do it here. This is going to be at the same level. All right. And lastly, there will be a Telegram channel that you can join. The link to this would be again in the descriptions box. And if you have liked today's session, hit that like button, share it with your friends. I'm sure give them as a challenge, you know, ask them if they can solve this puzzle. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be able to do that with the first method. But second one where you're creatively gliding the semicircles to the left, I, I don't know. And lastly, if you still haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do, because in case you haven't, you are going to miss out on a lot. And that's a promise from my side, you know, starting Monday, you will have puzzles, math problems from around the world come your way. And we are going to discuss some really amazing creative ways of solving those problems. So I'll see you from, from next Monday. Be, be safe till that time. All right. So thank you for your time. Awesome. Take care of yourself.